today is the feast of Saint Joseph, husband of Mary. Saint Joseph is one of the few who has two feasts on his name celebrated in a year. Today, on the 19th of March, we celebrate the feast of Saint Joseph, husband of Mary, and on the 1st of May every year, we celebrate another feast of Saint Joseph, the worker. Today, however, we will focus on Saint Joseph, the husband of Mary. God's ways are not our ways. God's plans are not our plans. As high as the heavens are from the earth, says the Lord, so are my ways different from your ways. And we must keep this in mind before we can encounter the readings chosen for the feast. In the first reading from the second book of Samuel, through the prophet Samuel, David is told that even after he has been laid to rest, even after his death, even after his life here on earth is ended, the Lord will continue his legacy the Lord will continue his generation. The Lord will continue to let his progeny exist and live. This promise which the Lord made to David is, was not an empty promise because it was fulfilled, not simply fulfilled, but fulfilled in the most perfect of ways when God brought through the Joseph, the husband of Mary, what we know as Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, very clearly, is a descendant of David, not physically, but through his foster father, Joseph, who is from the lineage of David and physically to his mother Mary, who also was of the house of David. So very clearly, the promises of God are sure. The promises of God are guarantees. The promise which God makes will be fulfilled, as we saw more than 2,000 years after David, in the person of Jesus. Joseph, in the gospel text of today, is betrothed to Mary. And the word betrothed meant engaged to Mary. It was sure that he would marry her in the near future, but for now he was not married yet. And because they were not married, they would stay in separate homes. Joseph would stay in his own home and Mary would stay in hers. Even as Joseph realized that Mary is apart from him, he has had no relations with her, and yet he finds out that she is expecting a child. Joseph wonders how this could be. He makes no judgment whatever. He reserves judgment. However, he has to take action because he is a righteous man. He is a man who obeys God's law. He is a man who follows the law. However, the law is only the means and Joseph realizes this and because for him it is the means, he does not follow the letter of the law. He wants to follow the spirit. And even though the law would state that the woman who committed adultery ought to be shamed publicly. It seemed from the externals that Mary had indeed committed adultery. But Joseph will refuse to shame her publicly, even though he is just, even though he is righteous, because Joseph is also loving. The love which Joseph has overtakes his righteousness and his just 
nature and that is why he makes a decision to divorce Mary according to the law but to divorce her quietly in private and not publicly. So he has made a decision to do this. And after his decision, he sleeps and he sleeps peacefully. But in his sleep, he has a dream. And in that dream, the angel of God tells Joseph that Mary has not committed adultery, that Mary is not guilty of any sin, that what is in Mary has been conceived in her by the Holy Spirit. It is not a rational explanation. It is not a reasonable explanation. And yet Joseph begins to reflect on what this could mean. On the one hand, his righteous nature, his just nature asks him to debose her. His loving nature asks him to debose her, but quietly in private. And now, this dream is inviting him to change his nature, to change his decision. And Joseph wakes up from his dream and makes that reflection. God's ways, Joseph knows, are not our ways. God's plan, Joseph knows, are not our plan. And that is why he obeys the instructions of the angel and takes Mary as his wife. It is because Joseph dared to do this. It is because Joseph dared to give up his own plans for the plans of God that Jesus could be born and have a foster father in Joseph and a mother in Mary. Then, what the Lord had spoken through the prophet Isaiah centuries ago is fulfilled now in the most perfect of ways in Jesus, who is named both Jesus and Emmanuel. The feast of St. Joseph, the husband of Mary, invites us to reflect first on the attitude of Joseph and compare it with our own attitudes. Sometimes in our lives, we might tend to be over-righteous. Sometimes in our lives, we might tend to be self-righteous. Sometimes in our lives, we might make the rule, the law, the end in itself. The example of Joseph and the inspiration of Joseph is saying to each one of us that we need, when in doubt, to do the most loving thing. We need, when in doubt, to listen to what God wants us to do and sometimes let our own will go in order to do the will of God. It is not always that we might be able to understand it rationally. It is not always that the explanation we receive will be reasonable. But it is true that always what God wants for us as what God wanted for Joseph and Mary and Jesus will be much better than what we want for ourselves. If Joseph had done his own will and not listened to the angel, we do not really know what the consequence of the birth of Jesus would have been. But because Joseph listened to the voice of the angel, because Joseph preferred to do God's will rather than his own will, we are given today a savior who inspires us. The second point is about who this Savior is. Joseph is told very clearly that even though he is the foster father, he will have no prerogative, he will not have the privilege of choosing the name for the child. The name for the child is given by God through the angel. Joseph has no choice in the name. Mary has no choice in the name. The name Jesus is chosen for two reasons. And the first reason is that Jesus was a very 
common name. Many people were named Jesus. And so by choosing the name Jesus, what God is indicating is that his son will be a common person like everyone else. He does not want his son to be extraordinary to his birth. He doesn't want his son to be extraordinary in his mission. He does not want his son to be extraordinary externally. And yet we know that this ordinary Jesus was really extraordinary and beyond. The second reason for the choice of the name is the meaning which is given to us by Matthew when he tells us that Joseph will have to call the child Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. In other words, the child to be born of Mary, the child of whom Joseph is the foster father, because he is the husband of Mary, will be someone who will not condemn, will be someone who will not judge, will be someone who will not punish, but someone who will love, someone who will have mercy, Someone who will constantly and every time forgive because he will live out the function of his name. And the third point which we can take for our reflection is what Matthew says at the end of the gospel text of today. The fulfillment of the prophecy made by both Samuel and the fulfillment of the prophecy made by Isaiah that the virgin who is of the lineage of David will conceive and bear a son. The promises of God are fulfilled in Mary, are fulfilled in Joseph, and are fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. The same promise was made to Abraham. And in the second reading, when Paul writes to the Corinthians, he speaks about righteousness being linked to faith. Abraham was a righteous man, but he is regarded as the father of faith. The reason is because Abraham, even though he had no progeny, even though he and his wife were both old and did not seem possible physically, reasonably, rationally, that they would have children, believed the promise of God that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the heaven, as numerous as the grains of sand on the seashore, and it came to pass. Abraham had no land. He was a wanderer. He was a sojourner in a foreign land. And he was told that he would be given land further than the eye could see. And it came to pass. God's ways are not our ways. God's plans are not our plans. As far as the heavens are from the earth, so are God's ways above our ways and God's plans above our plans. A very Happy feast of St. Joseph, the husband of Mary.